And here's just the information on mm -hmm. the county. Okay. And then I have the resolution I guess. Sorry, here. Yeah. And then what I'll do is I'll leave you one copy for your records. I'll take one copy of the contract or one copy for your records. Yeah. There it is. And there we go. Yeah. Is it? No, just yeah, so this is the and then at the next meeting, Board we'll be, uh, I'm going to ask Neil to come here too, but we'll be discussing um, scope services for the construction administration. So the condition of um, minutes. What the contractor has, no surprise. Make sure they're up for any guys a proposal to do that work. And then sometime beginning half of October, three counties. This one. We've been talking about this before. Yeah, their schedule is submitted. That's in that packet there, but uh, they're going to mobilize in May. But prior to that, they uh, stuff done with review shop drawings and get ready to go. Then we maybe work. We have the surprises. So they're saying they were very straightforward. No, not right now. So no, they put them right. specify the project. The treatment equipment is actually all made fairly locally between Iowa and Illinois. So it's all about. Well. Well. Really close. Uh, they only indicated, I think, a 12 week, eight to 12 week lead time on that. Um, you and I kind of discussed electric a little bit. Um, it's all single phase electric work out there. So that's a, not that they're going to go to Menards and get it, but it's readily available versus the different power three phase stuff. So feel really good about everything. Feel really good, especially with the May start time. They'll get everything ordered in the next couple months and it'll be sitting on the site. And, We'll go right away in spring. Yeah, for that. Go down and thank you. It's nice to see this move forward. Yeah, I think it is too. The blanks filled in. No problem. Give you 30 seconds to get them. Perfect. Then you get my email then too about uh, the agenda for next meeting. Yeah, and I responded like about 20 minutes ago. So. Okay, I appreciate that. 30 seconds is Tom's normal for you know payment approvals. <laughs> Just a heads up to the rest of you guys. Uh, this stuff for the 911 tower in Oshin came in this last week on the semi, so they have that all loaded and setting their stuff. You can see Kelmer's thing. The bottom part of stuff. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. The, other, the other pieces are laying and it's like the red crane. Yeah. So about 300,000 of the American Rescue Act is helping with the Steiner project, correct? Is that's, we don't know yet. We don't okay. know. Um, one of the things that unfortunately we don't know in the beginning is if and how much loan forgiveness that will be on the project. Um, probably sometime middle to late winter. Uh, if you're going to get awarded some of that, the, the DNR will send a letter. But until you close on that loan, which isn't going to happen for a few meetings, they don't put you in the pool. And it's kind of unfortunate because we don't know what the funding is going to really look like until we're on the construction work. So. so we have submitted the initial funding without any American Rescue Plan money to the, DO, or the, to the DNR and USDA. But if they don't give any loan forgiveness, you but yeah, they're withheld three hundred thousand yeah. too, so yeah. that their rates aren't over a hundred dollars a month. So, so that's they, kind of how it's sitting right now. But we wanted to look as bad as we can when we go in, so that they're more likely to give us uh, loan forgiveness. So if we get some good loan forgiveness, they eliminate what the county's contribution is. But until that happens, I have no idea. There's work well under pressure. Two copies for you, and I'll go listen in. There we go. All right. Well, I'll see you folks next Monday then, but uh, that's it for now. Great. Thank you. Have a week. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Take care. See ya. Next on the agenda, Hacker Nelson arrangement letter. I uh, forward this email out. Basically, we have a contract with Hacker Nelson for multi year. Um, service for our doing our county <laughs> audit. So this is their 
standard a letter to say we're planning to do it and here's what we're going to do and so it would be you uh, accepting those terms as the agreed upon services and rate that you made last year i'd move to approve the hacker nelson agreement second we have a motion and a second to approve the hacker nelson arrangement letter is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Commission carries unanimous. Next up, it looks like we have to set a public hearing for the sale of lots and spills. And so this is that's going on just a year ago. Some of the neighbors asked about these lots in Spillville. They're down by the river. I do have maps. Um, then I can pass mm -hmm. those around, but I did email these out. Oh, so yeah, there are yeah. these two, the little triangular one and the one right below it. I can't remember one of these is a business there. And anyway, one of the neighbors asked about selling those lots and another one of the neighbors also asked about it. And so we're finally getting around to getting this process in place. There was also, I'll make sure to send the information to the city of Spillville. Um, I, at one point they talked about it, but I think they aren't really interested anymore, but make sure they're in the know also um, if those are gonna go for sale. Um, we've got the public hearing set for October, the October 9th, and I'll be uh, at 10.30, and I'll be making a, publishing it in the newspaper as well as sending a notice to the adjoining landowners. And I also have a copy of the bid form, and so people who are interested can pick that up in my office. Right now, it's a resolution setting the public hearing and, and for sale of those lots. I'd move to set the public hearing for 1030 on October 9th, Monday. Second. The lots in Spillville for October 9th at 1030. It is a resolution. I think sure there's a question. That will be here? In yes. The yes. Shirley? Okay. Aye. Mark? Aye. Mark? Aye. Steve? Aye. Aye also. Motion carries unanimous. Get around the corner here and I could take the paper for thought. That's in the way. But my signature changes all the time anyway. <laughs> Next up, we have uh, MGB Flex Agreement. Uh, that was group benefits. And those group benefits uh, uh, manages our flex accounts for the employees that choose to do that. So they have this kind of standard agreement that we renew each year. There are very few changes. I don't know if all changes, but for the most part, it's the same. Um, Lynn has looked through it in my office, and Andy has looked through it. <laughs> said it's okay. I did email these out, or Lynn did, but it was just this morning. So. If you want to take a more in-depth look, they are in your email, but I would ask if you can, if you are okay approving them today, that we just get it done. I would agree with that. Yeah, that's standard language, and they manage our class account. For that <laughs> yeah, they looked it over. They're the ones that know what's going on. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the MGB flex agreement. Second. <laughs> We have a motion and a second to approve the Midwest Group Benefits Flex Agreement. Any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. That was no small document. No. <laughs> Not a lot of language. There is a lot of language in there. <laughs> and part of it is that because we're they're having access to all of our health 
related information, they have to sign about privacy and security of that information. Oh. Next on the agenda, discuss interview process. Really, and I met one of our interview questions and feel it's in the best interest that we postpone interviewing until we've got a. And uh, in the meantime, we'll refine the questioning further and get better prepared for it. I think it's. I think we do so. So two people decided that we're not going to have interviews. We haven't decided we're bringing it to you. Or just feel it would be better if we did it with that approach. I thought you did a great job putting together the questions, potential questions. Yes, sure thank you. Sure thank you for sure sharing. Along well, with, with the DOT, DOT and, and Joel and Vance. Joel Vance did a mm -hmm. nice job of assisting. And for staff. So it, we're going to uh, whittle that down to a few questions. So when we do get to the hiring process, we have our questions in place um, and I'll be sending those out as it gets updated with everybody's suggestions and highlighted priority questions. But back to what Steve was saying, uh, we had a good discussion on Friday morning at nine o'clock last week that the three candidates we have um, are, are really not qualified. And is that in the best interest of the county and everybody's time to be interviewing uh, folks that, that we know are not qualified? How do you know that? Based on their applications. If you if, if you can't put in an application, I, I would maybe suggest rephrasing it slightly different. Go ahead. The uh, I think it's they, these are definitely engineers and so forth that have their professional requirements. I think that as a county, we need to look at it a little bit further and still widen the pool to be able to try to attract some additional additional applicants. I think we're just we're jumping the gun and I think it would be disingenuous. I think we really ought to uh, be more thorough. And if it takes us a little bit longer, uh, I'm I'm as anxious as you are to see it come together, but I think we're we're just not ready. I do think if you start and we're doing <clears throat> and work itself discourage people from applying. I agree. That's a good point uh, more. So that you just bring everyone forward at the same time. It's not that one of these might not be a candidate, yeah. but the pool needs to be bigger if we can get it there before we move ahead. If we have more options to be able to look at and be able to refine it down, I think exactly what you're saying is, is a good thing. I've been through enough of those hiring processes where the word gets out and all of a sudden nobody wants to apply anymore. So I think it's good to not open up the door ready. Was that working? Is that where we're at then? If we need a motion, then I know that we delay until we have a large until and set a date at a future time. I second that. All right. We have a motion and a second to delay the uh, engineer hiring process. Um, any further discussion? Nice. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All those opposed, same sign. Aye. aye. Motion passes. Next up. Which one have you made the motion? Is it second and May is starting to be sure. Steve Drew. <clears throat> Jeff Boshi, maintenance superintendent, road matters. What do you have? Good yeah. morning, everyone. I think Nick was. Busy with his, so I don't think he was going to be available this morning. That's right. Because of our timeline, yeah. I couldn't yeah. get him on later, so this yeah. is where it ended up. Yeah. Um, just to have a few things major. Um, both the positions will be going out in the paper today. Um, one for the both equipment operator, one. One is with the bridge crew, and the other one is the engineer operator out of Enderville.
20th Street. We closed that this morning. Uh, we got some uh, pipe replacement we have to do there. It's uh, the south, southwest of Ridgeway. We always have, uh, we're putting in three, three crossword pipes there. We always, any heavy rains, we had issues where we lost probably and we'll rock every time. One, one what was currently in there? One? One pipe. So we're putting in three 48 inch pipe. So it should help in that slaver. Got that area kind of trapped on Friday. And so hoping we have it back open by the end of the week is our goal. So um, we got the pipe there. <clears throat> They're going to start digging this morning. So was that pipe he ordered? New or was that? Yeah, yeah. So there was an expense for. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So we got that. They do they do bids for pipes once a year, and then it's for the whole year. Yeah. How yeah. much pipes would be? Yeah. We had talked about putting a box in there, but the cost was a lot higher, so we went with pipe. So saved us quite a bit of money, and this should be should work pretty good there. Hopefully, we can cut down on the issue with the drainage so um bridge 373 up there in highlandville they got half the concrete work done up there um, they have probably for that other half this week so all the concrete that they're hoping will be done end of this week um then you got your cure time and everything but let's move along Move along pretty good. And then at that point, they'll pour the deck, or this will be deck pour also. Yeah. So, but they got half, half of it. So another half to go this week, and doesn't look like the weather's gonna hamper them too much. They got a little chance of some sprinkles, I think, maybe tonight or tomorrow. But um, from that, they moved along pretty good. Have the carrying times changed at all? Have they come down at all? No, it's still still pretty long. It'll take a little bit for that. So, and then we got some dirt work, obviously, that we might be a little bit short of dirt. Just kind of depends how we turn out. Matt said we might be a little bit, so we might have to find a little dirt to finish finish that off. So, um, Bluffton Road, the guys are doing some shouldering there. In the we got down with Pano so Bridgeway guys were over there doing some of them spots there, just trying to fill in some of them areas that were not real good. So and we used up all the dirt that conservation actually had for us down in that um, park down there on the Bluffton Road. We cleaned that all up and used that. Now we're on 310th Street to come digging some dirt out there. So. Um, uh, Blade quotes we figure on probably going on going over mm -hmm. next Monday. So with the short week last week, and um, I think Nick's gonna meet with us either tomorrow morning or Wednesday morning, and just kind of go over with the mechanics, see uh, which way we'll go with that, and we'll be prepared for that on next Monday. Um, other than that, I don't have. When, when do you anticipate we'll be back shouldering on 14? Um, we get for next. If we get done with that pipe project there that the bridge crew is on, we'll probably get back to that. I would say hopefully next week is kind of the plan. So, because we got 245th is pretty much ready to go. We got that all marked out and we can start on that. And I think we will go the north. We will go a little north of dry run also because uh, it's pretty wide there and then narrows up. So, um, but that'll be probably next on the dock and we'll get back to that. So, it looks good. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice improvement, I think. I mean, if we just we get some moisture and get stuff growing back and it'll change the look of it. I mean, it, and the guys did a superb job on it. I mean, it was well needed. Um, gets it more manageable, I think, for the 30 foot. I mean, it's, they shouldn't have any trouble driving on it. All re rocked and everything else. Yeah. Nice. 
we just need some moisture to try and find that rock down a little bit. We got a lot of dry rock out there. But the forecast doesn't look no, it doesn't real good for for You guys replaced the culvert east of Ocean too, didn't you on the gravel last week? Um kind of east south. I'm not sure. Up by Danny Tent. Oh yes, by Molars. Yeah, yeah. That was a that was an old cab crossing. Oh, okay. In there, we had some drainage issues, and there's no fences and no cattle there, so we ended up putting a 24 inch back in. We had that closed for like a day. Mm -hmm. We couldn't get it down in a day, but we took out like a 60 inch and a 24, and then the farmer um, put he ran a tile across. Well, we had the trench open and then we actually put in a manure pit or a manure crossing pipe for them also so that way they can run the manure holes through mm -hmm. it so so they were kind of looking forward to that, which we were looking forward to using that too because that way if we can keep the manure wagons off the roads and the holes works much better for us so uh, other than that i don't have anything. What is the uh, we had an issue up north of town and seeded some property down for a private individual. Mm -hmm. When did we make a policy to do that for um, private for a private property? Well, it was in exchange. For... Did, we, did we have it written in writing that we did it or what? Did it come? Did it come across our table that we were doing that or not? No. No. Oh. Why would it? It's the secondary roads department work. We don't we don't do we don't do public work for public people. That is the, the county's spent money. Five thousand of our own money to clean up a mess that, that we had that started. There, that was that the, we had started and she finished it. That's and their this decision. was a very good decision by I mean, basically the landowner paid for twenty five the bill was five thousand dollars. And she paid for $2,500 of the county's responsibility to get rid of it. She didn't want any reimbursement, reimbursement for it. So we went in and seeded the ditch and seeded into hers a couple bags of seed oats. So we seeded it. It's the president, because I have had umpteen people call me and want to know if they'll get reimbursed for the work they did in the road ditch. And I said, no, we don't have a policy that says we do that. Well, we, we don't reimburse. We pay in other scenarios, we pay oh. for tree removal. No, oh, I guess I, that the landowners has to come in. What I would say is just give us a heads up. So, when, I mean, it was, I can figure out, ask how many bags well, it that, was, but I mean, it's, that, that was the only reason yeah. we did it was because she spent twenty five hundred dollars of her own money that she didn't have to. I get it, Jeff. Just so give us a heads up. So when the public comes, comes calls us. I mean, yeah, I, the I don't know if you asking that you should refer them to the road department I mean, to find out if there's some work right. that we need done there. I mean, if somebody had an issue with it, have them call me. Call yeah. I would yeah. explain it to call them. the interim engineer. I mean, call or, Jeff. myself or Nick. Well, I was it's probably before Nick yeah. Yeah, was here. It's, it's a sharing kind of, part. It's kind of like the like kind exchange we're doing on turnarounds right. and other things. It's like, okay, it's part of the, we're not buying, but we're getting benefit from. It's right. also not our job to make that decision for secondary roads. It's their job to do their job. And we don't, I just we don't like take figure, that responsibility. Just figure, like, they, it states in our thing what we're responsible for doing since they opened up that can of worms. It states right in there. We can dictate what they do when they have to do it. I think it states so right in there. Agree so. on that. Exactly. What they want to. They want to bring me out. I'll bring the whole thing out. But I didn't appreciate that. What's that? I went out there and talked to one of the roads. I, I just I wasn't supposed to do it, but I don't like that coming back on me. Somebody could well, call me. Come to us then, Mark. I guess. And it's, I mean, after I did, we asked you out in the parking lot. You didn't know nothing about it. About what? That day. And then about spraying intersections, too. That should be the first thing on a priority list. If a county worker calls and wants the intersection sprayed, that should be done right away. 
And the answer was, no, we're not going to do it. There was a guardrail. No, it was an intersection. That's what I was informed. The, the well, chain of command is that if the public has questions, we refer to the secondary roads department so the secondary roads department can answer the these the questions. Called and it's not them. our job to go out to the county workers and reprimand them. But the secondary no, no. roads job if, to do if that. If the county worker calls the superintendent to tell them they want an intersection spray and the answer they get is no, then they have the right to come to somebody to get a to get it straightened out. The chain of command is they go to their foreman, the superintendent of yeah. roads, and then to the they, engineer. They call the superintendent. And if that if they don't get their answers in that chain of command, uh -huh. as in our employee handbook, have an engineer they go to our HR director, who is Andy Vander Mutton. You don't break that chain of command. Well, we don't want to go there because that's a whole nother. All right, guys. Where's the intersection? I guess I don't. I don't know. They just said it was an intersection. They. Had. They had called the one an intersection spray. But then they should be calling me. They did. They did call me. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I. That's all I was told. Is I I'd like to I know where it's at. I guess because yeah. it's hard to do something when I don't know where the intersection was at. Anything else for us, Jeff? No. That's all I got. I do think if you don't remember getting the call, then. If there's yeah. a breakdown in communication on one side of you know i mean before we start pointing fingers i'm glad they're addressing it go to, go to the shops ask them what the problems are they see that's why they don't if they don't do something they have nobody to go to okay yeah. 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 quick question before jeff goes on do you have any this IRP request, we probably need to give them an answer. We can't just sit on it forever. When do you want to talk about that? And do you want the road department involved? Or do you guys just want to talk about it? Or how do you want to do that? I think it's not on today's agenda, but I didn't know. I need to know when to put it on the agenda and how to get it. Put it on the agenda next week. And put it yep. should do when Nick For is what? available. No, what's this? That for the broadcast that wants Yes, to, I'm aware of that, but what do you want to see happen? I want to see agenda? if you say you need to answer them. Yes, if or you no. Say, you know, no. if you say yes, then we go to Andy to start doing the documents. If you say no, then they know they need to look at other options. Well, we have to it's under it. contract with the DNR, so we need to have everybody at the table for that discussion. That, that's Maybe exactly no, why no. I'm bringing it up, is because that's well, you they're really disagreeing. Let's talk about Monday then. Then we put it on next Monday's agenda. Okay. I think that's a very good deal. Okay. And I'll, if it works out, I'll try to put it when Nick is available. So during his time, just so we have everybody at the local, at our level. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next on the agenda, public hearing for the transfer of lots for the bell schools. And so this one, I explained a little bit when uh, when we set the public hearing, but uh, Bellstools owned a lot that was called Lot B, and we owned a lot, Lot A, and it needed to be used as an access when they were redoing the golf course road. And so instead of paying them for lot, the use of Lot B temporary, temporarily during that project, the agreement that was made was that they would let us use lot B for access in exchange for us giving them lot A after the project. And so the project got done obviously last spring. And so that was the agreement that was in place. And so we set a public hearing now to, to approve that transfer of lot the public hearing. So you have to someone make a motion to open the public hearing. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second to open the public hearing. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Is there any public comment on the transfer of the lots to the Bell Schools? I think Ben explained it fairly well. Any comments online? I move to close the public hearing. I second that. We have a motion and a second to close the public hearing. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries and ends. Any right, consideration of comments and action on the resolution? 
I move to approve the transfer. Second. We have a motion and a second to uh, approve the transfer of the lots to the bell stools. It is a resolution. Shirley? Aye. Mark? Aye. Mark? Aye. Steve? Aye. I also. Passes unanimous. So the, this resolution authorizes the transfer and then Andy or You don't think about anything about this one. Well, Andy will have, have a deed that will have to be signed, but we'll have to get that from Andy. Sure. But this authorizes you to sign it then when it gets to that step. And actually, that's what brought this all up is that Andy said, Well, we should get that deed signed over to Bell Stools. And I got to looking, and we never had the public hearing to authorize it. Somehow, it kind of got fell through the crack. Yeah. Uh, consent agenda. I've got the minutes, the claims, and the recorder's monthly report. I move to approve the consent agenda. I'll second that. We have a motion and second to approve the consent agenda. Is there any further discussion? If none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. Any committee reports? We've got the tax bill meeting in Des Moines this Wednesday. I'm planning to go. And I'm planning to go as well. And I'm planning to go. But we'll be well represented there. Plan bill here tonight at five o'clock. <laughs> uh, FYI, I will be attending the land landfill meeting also as the representative for the city of Spillville, since the mayor is supposed to be the designated one that is there, he will not be there. I, I double checked with Andy Vandermott, and that's it is fine. I am in, representing the interests of Spillville, Perfect. not as a county supervisor. And I think one of you then is the alternate for the county, so you, the county gets four. I think we're all going. We're, I think we'll all be there. The historic commission, commission, historic commission met this weekend on Saturday. We'll get the door because we'll be voting for that. Hosting a statewide uh, meeting here on October, but I'm not here. So it's across the street at Decor Lutheran. It is on, is more of a kind of also workshop on grant writing and so forth. The state uh, offers for CLG groups. They offer uh, some of the, the CEU credits that are necessary to maintain their certification. And so the local, our, our local county uh, is sponsoring that. And it'll be, a, a bit, I think, from 930 until 4 o'clock or 330 with a tour of the courthouse between 330 and 4 for any of those of the historic that are interested in our renovation work that we did. Is that a regional type meeting? Statewide. Statewide. It's pretty neat that it's going to be here. Yeah, there was an earlier one this year that was on the other side of the state, Sioux City. And uh, so this is kind of the makeup for folks that couldn't get to that side of the state that are coming here. That makes sense. I mean, yeah, why don't you just do it this time? Mm-hmm. That way. I mean, October 20. It's a Friday. Are they going to need any volunteers to help host that conference? I think they've got uh, the committee is a fairly large committee and they've got uh, refreshments planned and uh, registration and so forth. All I think they've got it all taken care of. Any other committee reports? <clears throat> I did. I did follow up with the tree issue that the uh, citizen had had about the trees that are planted on the hospital, predominantly on the hospital land. And uh, Andy did get back to me and said it is the counties. There's at least two when Med and is their maintenance responsibility for that. Um, I 
connected the citizen with the city forester who also attends the three board meetings and see if there's any way that can be dealt with. But we'll see where that goes. Okay. Thank you. So you did email the woman back? Yes. Okay, great. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so it's not going. I'm still waiting for the force to get back to me. We'll see. Mm -hmm. For this next agenda item, I failed to get Jim's name out of there last week and he was here talking to you. He, you asked if he would be available when Andy and Mike were mm -hmm. meeting with you. So um, I should have had his name listed as well to, if you asked him to be here. So I would hope that you could uh, let him make his no. well. Yes, I'll let him make a statement. He is online. Oh, yeah, the gentleman asked about vacation on the road. How do they go about the power policy or right. are they? They should normally they should talk to the county engineer's office first and the county engineer will make sure that it's not a road that we still need. And then if they give their blessing, then they, they should make a request either in writing, if, especially if it's not controversial, you know, a writing written request is probably OK. But if there could be a chance that they need to explain it further, they can get on the agenda. Good. Well, it is 10 10. Next agenda item is Andy Vandermonten, Mike Schemick, uh, Horn Hollow Road update, and legal questions regarding the agenda and other issues. Come on up, Mike. Morning. So, Horn Hollow has been around, it seems like, for a long time. Uh, you have a hearing. I understand in two weeks. Is that right? Um, that so I had sent you an opinion about a, two or three weeks ago that uh, I was of the opinion you don't have a civil interest in it because, uh, frankly, when the road got moved from its existing location to its current location, the lack of use. Plus, moving the road demonstrated an element of abandonment, so I don't think you had a civil interest. Since then, I met with Mike, and Mike convinced me that I'm wrong in my first initial and my first opinion, and that is that the road itself um, was not acquired through a subdivision process, isn't a subdivision platted road. It was acquired by petition of local property owners. It was approved by the assessor, and therefore it's not subject to the subdivision requirements that would make it the, uh, a road that was deeded to the county. It was a road that sits on an easement. So you don't have a settled interest, in my opinion, uh, for that reason as well. Um, so that's why you got the follow up email last week. I think I sent one. Mm -hmm. So that's that's where my office is at. So the bottom line is still I mean, not saleable either way. If you want to do anything to remove it from the county road system, your option is to vacate it. Okay, Jim, what was your interpretation on this, or what do you have for comment? Yeah, I mean, I. Thanks for letting me show up again. Um, Mike and I talked, uh, I'm sorry, Andy and I talked over the weekend, and I think if you if you read it pretty closely, if you read, it's it, it seems to apply to a subdivision. When I talked to Mike, Mike said, well, subdivision involves a transfer. There's no mention anywhere of transfer. This really seems to be an auditor's plat. What happened in the 1850s is a group of landowners got came to the county and said, listen, we've got this land, it's landlocked. We're petitioning you to build a road to make our land more valuable. 
it went in front of the county. The county approved it. The county hired a surveyor. The survey went out and created a plat. The plat was approved by the auditor. It called out a public road and it was filed. That's in essence what the statute says. I mean, I you know, I know, I know, I'm, I'm, I, I, I apologize to keep coming back to this, but it just seems like the right thing to do. County was asked to build a road to benefit the landowners. The county did it. That's exactly what the law is in terms of subdivisions, where you you guys are asked to build roads, you build them, and to avoid all of the confusion that exists and going back and trying to find documents from the 1850s, it says when a plat gets filed, it automatically becomes your fee simple property. Now, whether you guys want to vacate it or not, or whether you want to sell it, it just seems to me that this is kind of an important, important principle I think Andy was right the first time, and I feel for Mike. Mike says this is going to turn our world upside down, but it, I just think it's the right thing to do. So I apologize to the board to keep showing up and beating the drum, but I I think this is your property. If you want to give it away, so be it. If, if you want to sell it, I think that's an option. Um, the Shemex uh, or the 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 the. the adjoining landowners could buy it if they want to and if they don't want to i'd love to preserve it for the county on my dime thank you jim does anyone have any questions for a question for andy andy is this you know this mm -hmm. seems like something that we should have some advice from the state on because we might be trying to create law ourselves if or I think or instead of following pretty, law. So I'm not sure. It's pretty clear on it. Um, even with Jim's um, suggestion that this becomes an auditor's plan, uh, 354.19 sub 2 says that you can't dedicate a road through an auditor's plan. So, I mean, this isn't, uh, I don't think this is uh, an argument that needs to be uh, dealt with at any other level. It's and the other problem is, frankly, Getting an AG's opinion turned around in any time or fashion is uh, next to impossible right now. Thank you. Yeah, and, and to the extent that I can comment, I did call the DOT and the recommendation was to get a formal opinion around this. Um, it's a novel concept. It does not look to have been kind of uh, litigated before there's just statute that says and so if i'm wrong on the auditor's plat it's a subdivision plat right so I, it it i mean either it, either these are all easements or that statute allows you to own potentially hundreds of acres of unused secondary roads in the county this thing is sat for a hundred you know for the last 70 years uninvolved so maybe it takes a little bit of time to get an opinion from the attorney general, but at least we get it right and it's settled, right? The county, the attorney general issues an opinion. I've talked to Mike a couple of times and Mike said, this is my best guess. And I did some quick research. Um, Andy originally thought it was one way is now it's changed based upon additional information. The other way, it seems to me that this is not very clear and it would be nice to have some firm guidance so this board knows exactly where you stand going forward to deal with these issues as they come up. For whatever reason, it's now been brought to the to the to the board's attention. I think Andy said in the past that these things were typically just done by vacation. Nobody's raised it. And I'm sorry to be the 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 guy that created this headache for you, but I can offer aspirin. Wonder if there are any other comments. I I just have some reservations about which direction to go here. You know, it's not that I don't trust what Andy's saying, but uh, what kind of timeline would we be looking at if we a long time? We're at least uh, six months in of the last one I said. And the other problem, I and. Yeah, look, you guys want an AG's opinion, a kitchen AG's opinion, but the, the follow-up to this, and Mike doesn't like to hear this, 
is frankly, even regardless of whether it's owned or whether it's easement, you still have the abandonment question. And when it comes right down to it, that, that I think trumps whatever the ownership issue is. And, and I think that's that's crystal clear in my mind. Um, and you know, when it comes right down to it, you've got a property owner with that road sitting on their property who uh, I would suspect that would be the side that, that they would push. And I think that's a much harder position to defend than the one that Jim is raising on whether it's an easement or fee title. And if, if I, if you don't, I mean, I beg to Andy, to me, this seems like a much more open and closed issue where I think the Supreme Court has said that once you own it, there's a presumption that you own it unless you abandon it. Abandon has to be through intentional actions. You can't just ignore, if you ignore it, it's not an issue. If you don't maintain it, it's, it's not abandonment. It's a pretty high standard that you guys have to show intentional abandonment. So the first one is, hey, maybe flip a coin, see what the attorney general says. The abandonment, I feel more comfortable. Everybody's known this road is there. The county's thought about it in the past about getting rid of it, but never did anything. I think even the landowners have indicated that they knew it was there and have maintained it, you know, and respected that. So I, 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 it seems to me like this is a novel issue that's come before this board who's taking things in a very crisp business fashion. It would be nice to know where the heck we stand on this thing. So when the next road, when the next road, when the next road comes up, it's stamp. You know, it's six months, but there's no fire to to get rid of this property or to the roadway. And, it, you know, I go back to why I originally got in front of you guys. Pretty historic. And, you know, it's not a Roman road, but it's part of the Winnishack, Winnishack County history and maybe something that's worth preserving. So I'll, I'll see if I'd I can. Like to talk. Right. I'd I'll like to I talk can. a little bit about that history. Uh, 50, nearly 50 years ago, this was uh, approached to the Board of Supervisors in 1974 or something like that. And they tried to vacate it at that time. It was scheduled to uh, deal with it with the Board of Supervisors at that time, and somehow the ball got dropped. So this is not a new issue. This family has wanted to vacate this for a very long time. Well, so we've been at this for a while. And Jim is correct. Abandonment involves more than just not developing and not using it. But with the intent to vacate it 50 years ago is an important piece of this. But I think the bigger piece is you built the road not at the location it was originally platted, but north of that. And that is evidence that you don't intend to use that road. So I I, I don't think you have to get to the abandonment issue. I think it's an easement, but if you want to go that far, I think that's a, a much more difficult uh, lawsuit to defend, let's say. Andy, uh, can, can we separate this into two issues? One is the, the the currently used road section from the from one road to a turnaround point, and the other is the the issue of the road from there all the way to to uh, College Drive uh, in its entirety. Can we separate that into two issues? Are you asking if you can vacate one segment, not vacate the other? Can we deal with the one segment with the turnaround and the improved road and get that aspect of it done and sure. and then figure out the directions of what we can do with the remainder of that of the uh, of the properties in, in question? You could. So I suggest since it seems fairly cut and dry that we have an under an an agreed upon understanding with local property owners and the county uh, engineering department on the existence of the turnaround, the things that will be done. And so that piece of it can be separated from this art yeah, thing not. and completed. <laughs> it's, it's, done. it's completely not. done. That's been recorded, okay. yes. So the only thing we have left is this other section. Right? So there's two sections. There's one that goes out the other way through other property owners' woods and the mm -hmm. section that goes over to College Drive. And we're talking about abandoning that. Both, no, we're actually talking about all 
originally Lee talked about and Mike wanted to talk about a, the arrangement all the way to College Drive, yeah. even even that section between 52 and College Drive. But that goes to Wagon Wheel Road. Yeah, that right. goes up further. Yeah. Um, does the current turnaround area directly connect to the road? The yes. old road. The old road. It, it goes over top of the old road, but it goes beyond. It appears, yeah. I mean, so, so, that, across so legally we moved the road. The road got moved in the 1940s, 1950s. Yeah. Was it by convenience? It just happened yeah. as a flood so, down on the bottom land. I so it. our intention was to move the road. Not. Our intention was to have access for the shims at that time and for uh, my, Jim's house right up there yeah. so that they could get to it, yes. But, but the county has no records of that road yeah. being moved. We have records of surveyors out there surveying the road in its new location. Therefore, the county accepted it via the backdoor method rather than the approved front door method. So the question here is, what happened to the old road? Well, when horses stopped being used, we went to automobiles. It was not a desirable route, so therefore it was abandoned. It was it was given up. It was just forgotten about. Back in the time frame, that's the way things were done. Yeah. Well, here we are today trying to clean up the mess they made years ago. We can't go retroactive and say this is yeah. what happened because we're just saying here's the road. We don't want it. So my, I guess my question is, since we moved the road and extended to a turnaround, that was our intention to have it terminate there. Our intention was for traffic to terminate there. Yes. Okay. That's. I, I'm still comfortable having the public hearing on the 25th. We've worked on this for a long time, yeah. and I trust our county attorney's opinion on this. Well, I, I mean, this isn't the time to make any decision. Uh, it's time to make that decision is on. Right. I'm just saying, let's move forward with this process. Decide what you want to do, and at the hearing, you can. Yep. In the form of vacation food. And and to address one of Jim's comments, the how you might do road vacations and abandonments and roads that no longer use into the future, whether you want to request a, there's a there's further opinion or further research for future ones, you could do that. But if you still hold your public hearing, you could get rid of this one and work on that for future ones. Yeah, I mean, I, vacation vacation makes a lot of sense, right, if it's an easement, because you took the property from original landowners and you used it for a while, now you're giving it back to them. If you own it, I mean, just if any of you had a piece of land out in the country and you hadn't gone and done any work on it for 50 years and your neighbor said, hey, you abandoned it, give it to me for free, you guys would fall over in your chairs. So the only thing I'm saying is, do you own it? Do you own it? And if you do, I think you should treat it in a different fashion. And I don't know why we'd go to vacation without you guys knowing whether you own it or not. Do you own a couple hundred acres in Winnesha County? Do you own 500? Do you own 100? And what's the value on that? And shouldn't we know that before you make a decision? At the end of the day, you guys, it just, it just, it, I don't, we 50 years ago, we decided we were going to vacate it, but we we blinked and we didn't do it. Six months? We don't have six months to make sure we get this right? Or 50 years? I, I, listen, I, I don't know why the Shumps didn't ask again in 50 years. They only asked to vacate it after we asked this board to preserve it and to share that history with the county. They didn't do anything in 50 years. And actually, I didn't think they owned it 50 years ago. I think they're about 30 years back. So I think people were just sitting on this and didn't really care. And it wasn't until the county engineer told us, hey, there's this historic road, and we tried to do something about it that everybody woke up. That's the truth. So where are we set? So go ahead with public hearing. Make your decision on the 25th. We can, That's what the hearing is scheduled for. So at the public hearing, we could request to have an HE's opinion. I would not do just part of the public hearing, no. 
if you decide not to vacate it, you want one, that's fine. I just, uh, I can tell you what my opinion is that I don't think that that's going to change. So if you want the AG's opinion, I'm not conformed to that. Uh, act at the public hearing and then have me make the request. Anything else? Well, I think that's it. Do that. I will see you in luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, too, Jim. The pleasure. I hope not to darken your doorstep for a while. Thank you. If you don't mind, I may hang out in the background with my camera off. That's fine. Thanks. Well, I've got a minute here. There's a talk up at Luther coming up called Changing the World with Biological Agriculture, Thursday, September 14th at 9.40 a.m. in room 206 of Baldur's with Brian Doherty, former dairy farmer from Wakan and current agricultural engineer and student of soil. So that looks like it could be a real good one. Could you guys hear me okay? Yes? Yeah? Okay. Next on the agenda here, 1030, Lucy Shemp, Steve Daniels, Wern Hollow Road comments. Come on up. Oh, good, good morning. morning. Can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Good, good. I always like it when technology works. Uh, my name is Steve Daniels. I'm located in Cedar Falls. I am a lawyer with the Daniels Law Firm. And this is the rest of the story, the other side of the story. I represent Lucy Shemp. Uh, she has owned this farmland for 50 years. She bought it in 1973. And there has been no road through this farmland for that length of time, as everybody knows. I have reviewed the abstract of title. I'm sure you guys are all familiar with the abstracts. I, I have it here probably see it. It's over 100 pages long. It does have Josiah B. Emery's uh, patent when he received the property back in 1853. So the timing is right historically. It's 170 years ago. Interesting, the D, the patent wasn't actually recorded until 1917, which I know that a lot of people who work in real estate understand that, but that seems a little odd if you think about that for that being there for that length of time. I have talked to Mike Schimmick. I have talked to Andy Vandermont. And the reason we're on today is the fact that we were a little surprised with the opinions that were set forth in the meeting last Tuesday. Uh, we have been pretty clear that this was an easement all along in terms of what was going on. There is no, there's no plat in this abstract. Uh, I have looked at it. My clients looked at it several times. Uh, there just is just no plat in here, period. There is no mention of the road, period. So when she bought this land in 1973, I assume a title opinion was done, probably by a decor attorney, that said there was no issue related to a road. And then, so she bought it without that being there. So our thought is that, number one, it has been abandoned. Abandoned probably way before Lucy Shemp bought this property and that it has continued to be in that situation. Uh, so there isn't, we believe at best there is an easement, that an easement was abandoned years ago. And, and we believe the board is taking the necessary action here uh, to abandon, uh, to vacate, I should vacate that easement, uh, because then we won't have to worry about this again in the future. It'll be taken care of finally and be done. 
If it's abandoned, it probably doesn't really exist, but it does clear up marketable title. If it's vacated, that process goes through. This wasn't discussed today, but I know it was discussed with Mr. Shimmick. He has relied to some extent on something called waddles on land descriptions. And it talks about these sorts of things in this legal treatise that, uh, and what they do there is they look at it, if there's not a plat that you can find or use, it, it becomes an easement, it's my understanding of that. I was not familiar with Waddles before, so it's a, it's a new thing and all this is kind of new to most of us in terms of going back this far with this easement situation. So we're comfortable with having a public hearing. Uh, we're comfortable with discussing this matter at that public hearing and we will rely upon the Board of Supervisors decision after that public hearing. There is always an opportunity for either party to file a lawsuit if they choose to after the Board of Supervisors makes a decision. And we all hope that doesn't happen and we're not planning on that. We, we expect to win and have the road vacated. I'm not sure if Mr. Wicca will file any action after that is done or not. That will be his decision in terms of what he wants to do. So with that, that's our position on the thing. Very quickly, very briefly, I don't want to take any more of your time, but I'd ask if there's any questions. I don't believe so. <laughs> Thank you, Steve. Uh, let me clarify one thing, one thing Steve. Uh, when you reviewed that, the abstract from 1974, there was not mention of uh, an easement in the abstract at that point, to your, by your knowledge? By my review, there is no mention of an easement either. So it's, it's, at the time, so with the, in the abstract, at the time of purchase, 1974, there wasn't a record in the, in the abstract of, the, of an easement. That's correct. And I think the title so, opinion would bear that out. I don't have the title opinion. I'll have to ask my client for that. Thank you. You're welcome. Doesn't look like it. So there isn't there is a title opinion from that, but you don't have it. Usually, when somebody buys land, there would be a title opinion. I'll, I'm going to get that from my client. In terms, I don't have that yet. But you will by public hearing. I hope so, yes. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? Thank you, Steve. Thank you, have a good day. Likewise. See the bullying machine. Yeah, all about check it out. Yeah, they're all tested and everything. Yeah, I mean, no, they ever gone that you've ever seen? I believe so. Lucy, do you have anything else you want to say? Thank you. Thank you. Yes, there is a possibility there may not be a title of opinion. And I've seen people do that before for some crazy reason. I get one. The good thing is, we'll know on the 18th. Louder, please. It's actually the 20th. 25th. 25th, yes. I was at a meeting on the 20th. 
on the list. Double check this 930. Wait, one moment. <laughs> Medical uh, meeting will that's nine o'clock registration. Meeting on the twentieth is nine o'clock registration until three thirty p.m. And that's October twenty. October twenty. At across the street in the fellowship hall of Decor Lutheran <laughs> size. I think Tony is going to facilitate a courthouse tour of the renovation on farm. Nice. What's the official title of the group? Is that? Well, it's being put on by Historic Prince Art, Winnishie yeah. County Historic Preservation Commission. It is the National uh, Neg National Register okay. uh, program okay. by the Historic Commission. Can someone clarify what just I, happened and where this issue stands about that road? I didn't uh, hear any yeah. of the words of the attorney. I'm sure he described very clearly what was said. A clarification of what, where this issue stands would be very useful to me. I think it will be in the minutes. Yeah, they, they, well, they, you got a couple minutes to come to the they, Yeah, they no decision was made. The attorney gave well, Jim Wick and then the attorney gave two different opinions on how this could be handled. The board has a public hearing scheduled for the 25th, after which time then they will decide if they want to take action to vacate the road or not. Right. Just what I need. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <clears throat> Ten forty. Next on the agenda, Nikki Sten and I with DOT County Engineer Hiring Process. Come on up. Thank you for attending. Would the board mind if Nick Rosman joins at the table? Yeah, that's fine. Just since everybody can take one. Morning, Nick. Morning. Oh, there's no one able to get there earlier stuff. I have to scramble down my board meeting. Very understandable. <laughs> right, well, first off, I'm going to apologize and let the wrong title slide on there. This was excerpts from a local systems update at the ISAC conference, um, but just a small amount of that. So I want to thank the board for allowing me to be here today to talk with you all. I'm hoping we can just discuss kind of the roles and responsibilities of the uh, engineer and the board and then what role the DOT plays in this also to know how we or so you all know how I'm involved. Um, so most of the I'll interject real quick. Uh, there was some talk about having Nikki or someone from the DOT serve on your hiring committee, but since one of the applicants is a DOT employee, oh. we decided that was maybe not appropriate. So she's going to come and give you some of this more generic information, not about our specific applicants. Yes, I do not know anything about the specific applicants. Um, I will say most of this package I passed out to you is just things that you've already gotten from me, the guide for hiring the um, attorney general opinion. So we're not going to go through all that today. I just kind of want to um, breeze through some of these slides with you and give you a chance to ask questions if you want to. Um, so um, in that packet of slides, the first thing there is just our website, just as a reminder, it's where you can find the information for job descriptions, um, sample contracts, that type of thing, um, and then phone numbers if you need to contact me or anyone else in our bureau. Uh, the third page in that packet then um, just kind of talks about the secondary roads engineer roles and responsibilities. So that would be me. I am the secondary roads engineer in the local systems bureau. Um, so just so you know a little bit about me, um, one of my main duties is reviewing and approving the annual report, which is the financial statement of the secondary roads department. It tells us 
all of the code requirements that the engineer's office or secondary roads is supposed to do and whether those have been met or not. So I'm in charge of reviewing those and issuing any citations. Yeah, mm. question. OK, um, so there are just a number of things listed there that I check uh, that are code requirements, just so you know. Um, I also review and approve all of the county five year programs and the budgets. So all of those that you all approve also get uh, sent on to me for DOT approval. There are little different rules kind of between the county budget and the DOT budget. So I'm watching that on our side. Um, I manage the farm to market account, um, which I'm sure you all know provides you funding for your farm to market road system. Uh, we have account restrictions on that, so I'm the one monitoring that each county's balance as well as the fund as a whole. Um, I manage the highway bridge program, which is the main source of bridge funding that secondary roads department gets um, part of the Iowa County Engineers Association Executive Board and numerous committees. So my point here is just that I'm integrated into a lot of the associations. Uh, activities and then obviously um, I'm the one that gets to enforce restrictions when the county doesn't have a county engineer, which is just part of me being here today sharing with you uh, what the roles are. So the next slide there, I just want to uh, talk about why why have a county engineer? Why is that important? So um, can the board just run the secondary police department? Well, we can have the acronym here, team together, everyone achieves more. And that's really the truth with the whole um, county engineer, secondary roads department. Um, so besides being a team, I will quote in federal regulations do require it. So we do have that, um, but we're just gonna talk a little bit about how we're a team. Uh, so the next slide then has a graphic of that team. Uh, the county engineer obviously is at the center of the uh, secondary roads department, but also works with all of these different parties, including the board of supervisors. You all are a very integral part of making sure that uh, the things happen that need to for the department, as well as the public and all the staff on the secondary roads crew. Yeah. So uh, kind of getting into more than we done potatoes on the next slide is, you know, why is the county engineer important? Uh, so one of the reasons is Iowa DOT does require county to have a full-time licensed civil engineer in place and by full-time that can be a shared arrangement it, it does not have to be um, full-time single county um, one of the, the reason being the county engineer from our perspective administers all of the state and federal aid we have to be satisfied that the um, engineer there's someone in place that can carry out all of those program restrictions and rules um, so a few excerpts from our guide just say as you all know from correspondence we've had until the county hires a permanent engineer we do not allow any new projects to be let through the iowa dot that utilize any of these funding sources um, and that's again for rules we'll kind of go through or reasons that we'll go through um, Iowa Code 310.9 uh, kind of gives us that authority or backs us up in that. It says the department shall satisfy itself that the county engineer's office is organized, equipped, and financed to discharge the duties of the chapter. So we are charged with making sure that the county engineer's office is able to do its job and administer projects and serve in the capacity that the engineer is supposed to. And then for federal requirements, especially our federal program, without a permanent or interim county engineer, the state and federal requirements can't be met. So there has to be an engineer in charge of the projects in order to be able to utilize that funding. So on the next page is some of the Iowa Code duties and responsibilities that are really pertinent to the county engineer position. Uh, the first is just the term the board shall employ a licensed engineer with a contract not more than three years. Uh, second is duty of the county board and uh, board of supervisors and county engineers. So this is where we really kind of start getting who who's the lane, you know, who um, has what duty, what lane are, is everybody in. So the county board is charged with the duty of establishing policies and providing adequate funds to maintain the secondary road system. The county engineer then pursuant to board policy so board gets to set the policy but then the county engineer adopts the methods and recommends the personnel and equipment necessary to maintain the system and carry out those policies so it's a, a larger direction coming from the board and then the county engineer has the responsibility for determining how that is going to be carried out and done um, so that 
and 309.21, the supervision and const of construction and maintenance work. So all construction and maintenance work shall be performed under the direct and immediate supervision of the county engineer who shall be deemed responsible for the performance of the work. So this is telling us that it is the county engineer's specific responsibility to carry out the construction and maintenance work. Again, that the direction of what work is most important and the priorities are given by the board to the engineer to carry out, but then the engineer has a direct and immediate supervision and the engineer is responsible for that and does get to be held accountable by the board for accomplishing uh, the goals and policies and priorities that the board set out. And then 310.9 projects authorized by the department. Uh, so before authorizing for letting any farm to market road project, and that means any project on a farm to market road, regardless of the funding source, uh, unless it's local funding, the department shall satisfy itself that the county engineer's office is organized and equipped as we talked about in that earlier section. So that puts it on us before we allow something to go to letting, we have to be satisfied that the engineer's office is equipped and allowed to do their job and carry out their responsibilities. Um, so next slide is just about the 1948 AG opinion. Uh, there were two specific questions that were posed in that opinion. The first one is asking if there's any authority in sections named in that opinion uh, for individual members of the board to act as a foreman of maintenance work in their assigned territory or in their district where the county is divided into supervisor districts. Uh, and so the opinion says that really the whole gist of it is that the board and the county engineer work together. Again, they're a team. Uh, the engineer is hired by the board and in the performance of the duties is under the direction of the board. Like we just talked about, the board sets the policies and the direction. However, the county engineer is not merely an employee, rather they are a public official with certain duties and powers that coordinate with the boards. So again, it's that partnership going on. With the advice of the engineer, the board determines the program relating to construction and maintenance. When the board, and then I have underlined here, acting as the board and not individual members. This, this is something we like to bring up to share again, um, because it seems to come up time and time again, is that uh, the, the county engineer works for the board as a whole board, receives direction from the board as a whole board, not from individual members. Um, the county engineer is not supposed to take direction from an ind individual member, but rather that whole uh, governing body. And then it says uh, the board determines the program, and then it is their duty to turn the program over to the county engineer again uh, to be done with the methods the county engineer deems best. Uh, the engineer has the authority to direct work and supervise the county employees and the performance of that work. And because of that specialized knowledge and training that the engineer has, the legislature has placed the statutory responsibility for that work being done on the engineer. So again, um, the board doesn't necessarily have that training in the background the engineer has, and the law recognizes that and places that responsibility to get that done on the engineer. Uh, so again, um, all the work shall be performed under the direct and immediate supervision of the county engineer who's being responsible. The law contemplates a joint responsibility, again, so there is no conflict of power, duty, or authority. Uh, the board has the authority to direct an engineer to proceed with a job. The manner and method is up to the engineer. So again, it really just talks about that, the cooperative effort there. Um, so the bottom line, the board as a whole establishes the policy, allocate funds, and directs the engineer to proceed. And then the responsibility for the performance of the work is the engineer's. Uh, the next slide then answers the second main question in that AG opinion. Um, does this mean that the board shall establish policy, allocate funds, and, and, they, and inspect that? So you get to say whether the work was done well enough or not, um, leaving the immediate supervision and responsibility to the engineer. And really the idea here is that it is of course elementary that um, the individual members of the board should not act as foremen of maintenance work, even in their assigned territory or districts as individual members have no power or authority as individual members that have only the duty to report to the board as a whole as to the conditions in their districts requiring board attention. 
When the board members approve the recommendations, the work is to be supervised by the engineer. So again, the board identifies issues, comes together as a whole, discusses what is best for the whole county, um, gives that direction to the engineer to um, prioritize in the work. Um, so I just, a few of the things that come up county after county, time and time again, where this kind of gets off kilter and creates problems is when board members and you all take to heart the concerns you get from citizens, you want to do your best, you want to solve the issues. Um, but when board members start contacting the maintenance superintendent, the road crew directly, it really cuts the legs out from the, under the engineer and circumvents the process of what direction the crew has been given already. It disrupts the priorities that they've been planned and really puts a great big chink in the chain of communication. It just uh, throws everything off. Um, so board members should not visit secondary road shops. Um, the occasional visit, maybe with the engineer is fine to see what's going on in the county, um, but to talk directly, to give direction to um, individuals is not, um, not something that they should be doing. Direct communications, again, from the board to the road crews, um, cut the legs out from under the engineer, um, but the board does need to be satisfied that the engineer is carrying out the work and policies that were directed. And so, that, again, that good communication needs to loop back to the board. And then that bottom line from the DOT's perspective, again, is that the DOT needs to be assured that the county engineer is being allowed to do their job in order to let um, projects. And so the next page is just kind of a graphic, um, you know, with a good, the good process forward to engineer to crew, back to engineer, back to board, and it keeps that good circle of communication. Everything works well. Um, when you cut out the engineer, that just throws everything off in terms of the engineer is no longer even able to um, carry out their codified responsibility of main or of um, implementing the jobs and the recommendations made by the board. They're just not even able to do it. The board steps in and circumvents them. Um, so just kind of briefly about where we're at with um, the position here with Winnesha County. Um, I, my personal opinion, take this for what it's worth, is that you all have it, an extremely good engineer um, prior to this opening. Um, was always after funds carried out projects well. Um, I think there were some issues and maybe the harmonization that we've just talked about not happening well and not everybody kind of knowing their roles and responsibilities. And so I, again, commend the board for letting me come talk to you today and kind of discuss this because I think moving forward, everybody has the goal of making this a more positive situation of drawing in a good county engineer. And I think everybody knowing their roles and responsibilities will help that be a more fruitful and productive path forward when you can all find someone. Um, and the DOT does not like not allowing counties to let projects. We don't relish in um, not allowing you to get the money spent those projects out there. We want you to do that. Our main goal is to get you the money to keep things going. And so we do want to be a helpful resource to you. Um, I guess I would maybe leave the last few minutes if any of you have comments or questions for me about any roles or responsibilities or restrictions that we have in place. That's very good. Thank you. I remember this section of the conference last March and found it so informative at that time. I learned a lot because I didn't really uh, fully appreciate before and this helps a great deal. Yeah, and I think just you know, as you talk to other supervisors and stuff, those counties that have really, really good working relationships between the board and the engineer, you can just see it. They all know, here's my responsibility, here's where I turn it over, and I need to go back and inform the other person. You know, it's a really good chain of communication, but everybody keeping in their lane, too, and knowing what their goals are. So. What is the general contract that most, is it three years? Most of them have a contract is three years. Not all of them do. I would say over half do. Um, most of the time anymore, a contract. I don't see many engineers being hired without a contract now. The ones that don't have contracts are kind of holdovers from mm -hmm. earlier days. I'll say most contracts are three years. Um, every once in a while, there's a one year, two. Don't see many two years. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Like, is, there, is there a way, whether it's Nick or another county engineer, that we could have a more, I don't know what, what it is, a more uh, uh, detailed sharing agreement so that we could at least continue uh, letting projects. If it's another county engineer rather than an interim engineer, that we could put in place a permanent sharing agreement, but that isn't maybe permanent more than six months or whatever, so that we can keep letting projects without uh, committing that this is a sharing forever kind of situation. So DOT is probably not going to take like a six month uh, duration as a permanent solution. Um, something with, I don't even know about a one year contract, but more than that. Now, something like a shared arrangement, if it were Nick or someone else, um, where it is a true, uh, not just an interim, but sharing agreement and make you look for someone. I'm just throwing this out there. That's working on getting their license that could train. So it's not a forever situation, but you have someone else stepping into the situation. That's also an option for the board. If, if you can find another county engineer to agree to be that permanent until you get someone trained up that maybe is working on their license or just until someone else steps in. Um, but I, yeah, I don't think a very short Duration okay. contract is what we're going to be yeah. satisfied with. Yeah, um, yeah needs to, we need to be satisfied that there's going to be someone there again to oversee those projects as they go through, because that's really the whole point of our authority is making sure there's someone in place to carry out that mm -hmm. project. Are there other examples of shared situations in the state of Iowa? Sure. Um, we've got geez, what is that? not quite half a dozen right now. There have been a few sure. reductions in that. Uh, the County Engineers Association is actually right now working on a template for a 2080 sharing agreement. Um, so hopefully that'll be done soon. Um, I have a couple, uh, two or three maybe, um, shared engineer contracts that I can provide to you guys for examples too, if you want them. And we can ask for more. People are generally willing to share. So yeah, I can help be that coordinator. Nick, do you know which county uh, Chickasaw was sharing with? Uh, yeah, they were sharing lots of right prior to Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Mitchell Worth, Tama Powashik just disbanded. Um, there was Wayne Decatur that just disbanded. Um, Union Clark just disbanded also. <laughs> um, so they're actually we're kind of seeing a, a breaking up of them, but it, everything's really morphing right now here in this last year. Um, County they break up because, because they found permanent um of you know all. Being honest and in, in some of the situations one particular county um the board was not necessarily respecting the office of the county engineer and in a lot of cases the county engineer said i'm going the other place permanently um so that happened in a few of the situations um yeah uh, mitchell worth is still going just fine <laughs> as far as i know um clinton jackson yeah clinton jackson that's yeah. another one um, that seems to be going decently um okay does anyone else have any questions for nikki i think just another quick comment that i i can tell you this is that you're not going to find anybody that's going to want to share until that teamwork starts working in that packet there needs to be communication between the engineer and the board members. I have that with Howard County. I have calls all the time, seven, eight o'clock at night with board members. Um, you guys need to be talking with the county engineer. And right now I'm your county engineer. Um, it should not be at shops. It should be talking with me. And then we need to follow that chain of command. Until that is uh, proven, I don't respect it. I don't know that you're gonna get many candidates uh, at all. The county engineering community in Iowa right now is very, very aware of the situation here, which I'll be honest is why you're not seeing probably some applicants from current engineers. They're very aware of how the county is functioning, which again is just why I share, you know, educate on all the rules. Hopefully that situation can improve. So. Well, we always our county for that to improve. <laughs> Everybody wants to move forward for that. I'm going to see W14 be let. <laughs> so. I do hope it improves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up on the agenda, we're going to go into a closed session for a joint meeting with the Security Committee and the IT group.
So, just a reminder, I'm closed session. Um, thank you, Mary. Procedures, you'll both go into closed session. While you're in closed session, you won't take any actions. I will keep detailed notes as well 